one who so masterfully manipulates metals. Just be mindful, someone is not manipulating you. You see daggers where there are none. And you ignore them until they are right at your throat. No, enough. Did you alter the dwarven rings, yes or no? No. He touched him again and gave him that look. We did. What are you talking about? This time we brought deceit into the process. What deceit could you possibly... The letter. No, that, that was... You lied. You must go to Lindon forthwith and confess the truth to your High King or matters will worse. No, do that. He would, he would never permit me to forge anything again. So, uh, Anatar here is trying to c convince Granny Brimbor that because they forged the rings in deception and Granny Brimbor lied, that now the rings are corrupted. I don't understand the angle he's trying to go for here. Is he just trying to get rid of Granny Brimbor? We plunge straight on. What? Father, I have been to Eregion. I tell you, some. And now we're going to switch over to the dwarves immediately after 60 seconds. I don't understand that strategy. I thought telling him that he didn't uh, corrupt the ring or uh, fiddle with him in any way was a better strategy. Because then he would convince Celebrimbor that his craft is perfect and therefore he should continue the craft because it's perfect. But instead he was like, oh no, you know what? You're right. They are messed up because we lied to the king, and now you either have to confess to the king, or we just keep going. That doesn't make any sense, because if they just keep going now, with knowing that, well then the nine rings would be corrupted too, because these are going to be made in deception too. That, that whole argument there would end up proving to do the opposite of what Anatar would want, if Celebrimbor had a brain. We mustn't use them anymore. I had hoped our estrangement would help ship you, my son. But I did not expect how <clears throat> much it would shape me. Your desire to partner with the elves has saved our kingdom. I need your axe by my side. So hold on a second. When they made up in the episode, he didn't restore him to be the prince? That doesn't make any sense. Like, they clearly made up. Like, they, they kind of stealed the patch, you know? They, they kissed and made up. And I thought it was okay. I thought it could have been better, but I thought it was okay. But then I thought it was all, everything was back to normal. Which is why I thought in this episode, whenever they were hussing and fussing about money again, I just thought, well, he's a prince now, isn't he? Again, uh, he was always a prince, but now he's got his position back. So I guess all the money's back now. But that wasn't true, and so now his father is offering him to be back at his side as his, you know, as his heir or whatever, which I don't think that's how that works at all. But I guess that's what's going on. Durin, what did he say? It's a nice soundtrack in the background. I gotta tell you, the dwarves have decent soundtracks in them. They don't last long. He's got his gold necklace back. That's right. Oh, there's resting bitch face. Swear it. Swear to me that you will never wear one of those rings. There's no reason for her to suspect that it's bad. What's weird is it's so weird because she was originally all in favor of making the rings and helping the people. And then the moment the rings start having huge successes and opening up the light. In this episode, she like has this horrible reaction and she thinks everything's bad and she doesn't trust it. None of that lined up or made any sense. And then, oh, just so happens, she comes across a Belrog in a cave and hears the, the rumblings or whatever. And now her all of her bad feelings fall, fall in line and she's like, oh yeah, the, this is so bad, the rings are evil. And it's just her whole motivations don't make sense at all. I swear it. Is he wearing glitter on his hands? Agency uncanny. Why does he have glitter and nail polish? Even Look, Owen, oh, we're jumping right back to Oregion? Why do they hop back and forth like that? Just 
stay on a scene for a little while, man. Or stay in the same place, you know what I mean? Yes, within the artist's bosom it begins to. We have failed. Every one of us. We must atone for our mistakes. The nine must do far more than bring aid. That makes no sense. Bring balance to the entire project. There's no reason he would do that. Strength from. We shall work night and day. A new process. A lot of diversity amongst the elves. We have an Indian elf. And any of you who offer so much as a hair's breadth, have I made myself plain? Yes. Yes, yes a master. His motivation doesn't make sense. My friends, your master may seem unreasonable, but that is simply because he knows how much depends on your success. On me. That we will complete the rings of power. Shall we begin? So he's freaking out. So I'm assuming they're trying to paint this as... I don't know, he's between a rock and a hard place now, I guess. Because what's happened is, is he's in this position to where he's already screwed up and lied to the king, so he can't go forward. But I guess he now feels compelled that the only way is uh, to go forward in forging the rings. He can't come forward and confess to uh, High King Gilgalad because he feels like he'll be in trouble and he'll lose his smithing license or whatever. So instead, the only way now is to just forge on ahead and keep making these rings. I, I don't know, man. It's just, I guess that's what they're trying to portray. Oh, look, the army's still approaching. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. There's sunlight. If we all recall that the orcs here are vampire orcs and they can't get in the sunlight because they're immune to, they're not immune to it. Like it harms them drastically to the point that Mordor had to be creative. Um, because if you remember in the last season, if they even got in the sun, they would be burned alive. So it looks like the sun's about to come up and burn them all alive. So, uh, a little consistency there. What are we doing? The orcs are not in Mordor. A legion of them are headed for Eregion. You must send the army to Eregion this moment. That will not be possible. I have reason to believe that Sauron is the architect of all this well isn't that what um elrond's been saying this whole time isn't that exactly what he's been saying what's what you gonna say elrond are you gonna be like i told you so region is the very jewel of elvendom if it were to fall it would be a mortal blow for all in middle earth you must send aid our armies cannot defeat both adar and sauron <laughs> There's the orc with the family. He's got his wife and child at home preparing dinner for him. Let, let's hear it for, uh, Glug? Is that the orc's name? <laughs> is that who this orc is? It has this guy on screen, Glug. Is this Glug? Oh, we have to see. I think that's who it is. We know who Glug is. Oh, they seem so heartfelt and innocent and... You just have so much compassion for them, don't you? Glug. Yes, sir. Oh, Glug, you're letting me down, buddy. I brought you here, not as a prisoner, but as a potential ally, for we share a common enemy. All wrong. Um, yeah, okay, interesting. Not too much, but uh, a little bit. So, I didn't understand High King Gilgalati, uh, Swiss Cheese. I didn't understand why he's like, we can't defeat the armies of Adar and Mordor. Mordor doesn't have an army. Sauron doesn't even have an army. There's only one army of orcs, and it's Adar. And so, I don't know what High King Gilgalad is talking about. And Elrond showed up there and he's like, hey, you know, uh, the, there's an army marching on, what is it called, Eregion. And High King Swiss Cheese is like, hey, um, yeah, I know, but, you know, I think Sauron has orchestrated this whole thing. You were right. And 
Elrond responds and he's like, well, that's great and everything, but still there's an army going to Eregion. It's a big deal. That's where all of our smiths are. That's where all of our weapons are made. We really need to help out and save them. And High King uh, Gilgalad, uh, Gilgalad is, uh, or Gilgadaddy, whatever his name is, is like, well, we can't fight both Sauron and Adar. And it's like, what? What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? You don't even know. Like, all you know is that there's one army for sure that's been verified, and it's it's going to Eregion, and it's almost there. Where's your army at? Where are you sending it to Mordor? Because if you're sending it to Mordor, there's no one there. They're all out. Adar's whole army is out. Sauron doesn't have an army. So I don't know what's going on. It's like, um, what are we doing here? <laughs> Wow, so, um, oh gosh, okay, I guess we'll see, and, and at the very end there, Adar's like, hey, let's join up, he takes Galadriel out, says, hey, let's join forces, so it's gonna be Adar, Galadriel, and Glug, and they're gonna fight against, um, the forces of Eregion, I guess. Sounds interesting, I'm, I cannot wait, super cool, but that's gonna be it. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about all this stuff? Do you like the show? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's working out? I'd love to know what you think in the comments. And uh, please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified about when my new videos drop. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great freaking day.